Have you ever had those aha moments at a job? Well, I've had several, and um, I'd like to share with you one in particular. It was um, towards the end of October, and something funky was going on with my foot. And I went into a specialist because this had been going on and getting worse and more painful for several months. And as I went in, I ultimately found out that I had some mutant crazy thing going on with my foot that needed to be taken care of immediately. Um, the longer I put it off, the worse it would get. And so um, I was currently working at a dental office. Um, it was a new dentist that had come into the dental practice. So all of the team there was working really hard uh, to try and do everything they could to make this practice successful for this new doctor. And I was very concerned that I was going to have to take some time off. I had found out from the doctor that he said, you know what? two or three days at the most, um, and you'll be good to go back to work. You know, take two or three days and you'll be ready to start back. And so I talked with uh, the dentist and explained the situation and uh, planned to do the surgery. I think it was a Thursday. So that would give me Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and be back to work on Monday. So a little bit longer. And made the arrangements, reassured him that I'd be back. At that time, uh, Thursday was our last working day, so it would be that I would only miss one day of work. Uh, planned everything that I possibly could. Well, went in and had the surgery, and this was at the very end, just before Halloween in October. And when I woke up from coming out of the anesthesia, I heard the words that you never want to hear. And it was the doctor, and he's like, Ugh. Oh, Gil, I got some bad news for you. It was a little more involved than we thought. I needed to place a rod, several pins, and a lot of screws in your foot, which amounts to that you will not be able to walk on that foot for at least a month. Oh my heck, not the kind of thing you want to hear, but what do you do? You're there and you got to deal with it. Well, anyway, um, I had planned well because I had the surgery on a Thursday. So I was off one day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I went back to work on Monday. Um, I was back working within five days of the surgery. Well, it amounted to a lot, and this is when I found out what a dear, wonderful man my husband, Danny Cook, is. Um, I could not drive. It was my right foot that had had the surgery, so there was absolutely no way I could drive. And I was on some pretty heavy pain medication. So he uh, got clearance from his job that I could ride in his van. And every morning we'd get up early. Uh, if he had to be to work at 7 or if he had to be to work at 6.30, we'd leave earlier than that so he'd have time to drop me at the office. I had keys so I could go in, turn the alarm off, and I would sit there uh, until the time that I could work because the doctor was so worried about how many hours we worked. But it was a way that I could get to work. He would carefully help me down the stairs. If... Uh, in October and then it was November it starts snowing and I was panicked because the doctor had said if you bend those pins or that rod you'll have to go back in and have surgery so I was scared to death here we are in Utah with snow and ice and sleet well Danny did everything just wonderful every morning he dropped me off and every night well, this went on for six weeks, and finally at the end of the six weeks, I was off the crutches and off the pain medication, and I could drive, and I could use that foot uh, to step on the gas and the brake. So it was my very first day that I was driving to work, and wouldn't you know it, there'd been an ice storm in Utah. We don't get a lot of them, but it happened to be that day. Um, 
I went out and got my car, which was in the garage, and I headed off to work. Plenty of time, and um, I drove and pulled into the parking lot. Now, the parking lot sat on a curve. It ran down, and um, I went to the most level part, but it was still downhill, and parked, pulled in. It was dark. I could see that there was another car in the parking lot, which happened to be the boss, so I'm like, great. If anything happens, I got my cell phone. I can call. Well, I opened the door, and I swung my left foot out, and I went to step down, and it slid. It just whooshed right out from under me. I was still sitting, thank goodness, and then I looked, and I saw that entire black top of the parking lot was sheer ice. I'm like, oh, I cannot slip. I cannot go through six more weeks of crutches. Well... I turned around and I thought, maybe my boot, because it was so big, you know, those boots are huge, and they have all those ridges on it, and I thought, maybe that boot will have traction. So I stuck, I turned around and stuck my, my right foot out. Same thing happened with the boot, it just, poosh. Well, I thought, we've got ice melt in, the doctor's in there, I'll hurry and call him on my cell phone, and he can come out and, you know, sprinkle some ice melt and make it safe. Well, I grab my phone and I dial and I hear, yeah, gal, it's the doctor. I go, hi, um, I'm up here in the parking lot. I just tried to get out. It is a sheet of ice. I am really afraid that I might slip. Is there any way that you could bring some ice melt and sprinkle it around for me? Um, I, I just really don't dare walk on this silent for a few minutes he goes yeah okay he hangs up and i'm like oh wow thanks because in my mind i'm thinking if i slip and bend my rod or break those toes and have to go through that again i'm just not going to i maintain i'm sitting there and i'm waiting and watch the clock it's about five minutes i'm like Oh, I must have interrupted him. He must have been in the middle of something. Well, I'll, after a few minutes, I, I see him start walking up out of the basement stairs. And, and he's got the ice melt. And I'm like, hallelujah. And he, you know, is like throwing some here, throwing some there. He walks on the sidewalk, sprinkles some there. And then about five feet away from my car, he grabs the bottle and shakes it that way. So there's... A little bit that you know sprinkles out and he turns around and walks off I'm like, okay well maybe that's good you know be embarrassing if you fell and I was wearing a dress and I'm like you don't want to fall in a dress and have your boss see your underwear so I watch him walk off and then I watch him walk down the stairs and then he goes stairs are all fine they're not icy and he walks off I'm like, well, if I fall, you know, I'll be real careful, try to get low. So if I fall, it's not too far. And um, if I do fall, I can crawl over to the sidewalk and then crawl to the railing and pull myself up. Or if, if I fall really fast, I could just crawl back into my car. Well, I made it. Very cautiously, but I made it. Had my little cane in one hand, and very slowly, and looking for where those little pebbles of the salt were. And I made it into the building. I went to work, and I went to work every day after that. But I had a big jug of ice melt in my front seat so that no matter where I went if there was any ice or snow where I thought I might slip I could sprinkle it and I wouldn't have to call anybody now I learned a very powerful lesson and I want you to remember it if you work for a boss that could care less after you've had major surgery if you're gonna fall or slip and doesn't even stay there to make sure you're okay. 
might be time to find a new job, don't you think?